I remember interviewing you, your very first book, Bitten. Mm -hmm. What, five, five years? Yep. Five years ago? Five years. And thinking, and I think I even said it to you, you have no idea what's about to happen to you. <laughs> because I read the book and went, oh my goodness, this is going to be very popular and do really well. And you were just kind of oblivious. To <laughs> <laughs> so how have you changed since then? I think I'm still somewhat oblivious. Uh, I mean, because I live out out here, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere. I'm just plugging away on my novels. So when you know they become more popular, and I get back sales figures and that, and get you know my uh, reader email increasing with you know every every book. It still kind of seems somewhat distant. You just, just can't quite connect that to the books that I'm plugging away on down in the basement. Let's talk about um, about Elena. Who's um, you still fond of her? She's your first character. I am, and I think that it, it showed me when right, with writing Bitten that I made a good decision to switch narrators after book two. Um, I, when I first announced to readers that I was leaving Elena and going to branch off to other narrators, the reaction was overwhelmingly negative. It was, what are you doing? We really like this character. Why would you ever do something like that? And my response was that, you know, I just, I didn't want to keep writing Elena until I was so sick of her. I wanted to, to commit character murder just to get rid of her. Well, so I went away for three books. Readers got used to it. They very quickly adapted to the idea of changing narrators. And coming back in book six, was great. I came back to her, picked, picked up her voice, revisited her life, and was not nearly as sick of her as I would have been with, if I'd written book six of a werewolf series. In this book, Elena is, um, oh, she's downright domestic for, <laughs> for a werewolf. <laughs> so where is she in her life? Because it was a big event. Yep, she is pregnant. And this was seeded first in the second book, Stolen. There was a little clip at the end of it where there's some comment made about she gets along well with the uh, young witch and she was sort of jokes that that better not mean that you and Clay thinking of thinking of kids because the answer is a big no. Over the next couple of books, even though she's not narrating, there is when we do meet up with her or get an update on her, it is that they are considering the possibility of having kids and it's a really big issue for them. So come book six, when it opens, she's pregnant and then realizes she has whole new issues. After thinking that she worked all of this out, she has whole new issues with it. And it's a little too late to do anything, anything about it. This story, kind of, kind of different territory. <laughs> it was. Uh, I, I had the idea in my idea file, which was the basic idea was I'd read something on the missing from hell letter from Jack the uh, Ripper. It's been missing for years now. No one, no one knows where it is and thought, what if it really was from hell? That's not how it played out, but when I had that in my idea file and I was looking for one I wanted to do the werewolves and looking for an, for an idea, that worked well for me because it put them into a situation that they knew nothing about. So far they've been up against, they were up against other werewolves, they were up, up against humans. These are threats that they can clearly fight because they're good at fighting. That is what they do. If Give them an enemy and they'll mow them down. In this, their enemy is, you know, this portal that is spewing out zombies, and sure they can kill them easily. And then, they, then, then they just reappear. So they're really out of their depth on how do you close this? It's obviously magical, and then they know nothing about magic. So I wanted to sort of put them completely out of their depth. And just to uh, pile things on a little more, instead of them being, you know, out in the woods where they can roam. They're in downtown Toronto <laughs> trying, to, trying to think with all the urban smells and they're running through the ROM construction site at one point. Yeah, and that was you know, trying to get them completely out of that. In, in Bitten, a lot of it was in forested areas. It was in upstate New York. Stolen, it was, it was in uh, Maine, in the forested areas of Maine is, is where most of that took place. So I wanted to get, get them out, get them into urban. Toronto was a good choice because Elena grew up there. In, for me, good choice because I'm able to, you know, use love to bring in Canadian settings, and I was able to do it, sort of justify it, because as I was researching theories on where this from hell letter is, there's one rather vague theory that it's in the possession of a Toronto collector. 
Oh, really? So that's not made up? That's... No, no. There is just, a, if you're going through all the different theories of who took it or where it is, there's one that says that it's believed to be in, in the possession of a Toronto collector. So, oh, okay, then. <laughs> Good excuse. Very enjoyable, and, and it's so nice to see that you're still you. Yeah, I mean, that's I, good. I, was, I was worried, you know, because, you know, you're, you're, you're a name now, and I thought, oh, she was so nice when I met her, and you're just the same. So, good. Except, you, you know what, you're a little more confident in a nice, yes. in a nice way, <laughs> and, I, and I, I'm really glad to see that. Good. The book is Broken. It's the latest uh, in the Werewolf series by Kelly Armstrong, and Broken is published by Random House of Canada.